These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So we should start uh, with this. Uh, we have these two starting materials and these reagents as well and we want to try to predict what the uh, outcome is going to be here. So let's talk through that. Does anyone have any suggestions for what might happen first here? Um, one of those, one of the carbonyls from that top one is going to turn into an enolate and then it's going to attack the carbon of the alkene bond. And that sounds good. Okay. So, um, let's see, what's going to turn this into an enolate? The base. The PTOK. Yeah, because this is really an ionic bond. This is the most reactive atom in the mix right here. We have to pick out this. These two things are just solvents, basically. They're not going to really play any role. This is the reactive atom over the molecule. All right, and now this is going to turn this into an enolate. How exactly will this turn this molecule into an enolate? Steal. Yeah, but which H will it steal? From the methyl. This over here? Yeah. Right. Now, your reasoning there is this is an alpha carbon. So we know that's the alpha carbon that's acidic. However, this is not the only alpha carbon here. What are some other alpha carbons? This is an alpha carbon. And so is the one in the middle. But this is an alpha carbon too. Now, it doesn't matter whether we take from either of these because they're symmetric, but we do have to decide whether we're going to deprotonate the terminal alpha carbon or the middle alpha carbon, so to speak. Well, one of them is much better. Terminal. Turns out, actually, that we're going to take this one over here. Turns out this is the one that's much easier to take the proton from. Maybe it'll be easier to see why that is after we draw what happens when we do that. So let's draw what happens when we deprotonate this carbon over here, and we'll see why that's so much preferred. So let's go through that. Okay, now. I think we had said terminal before because we first thought that we were making a cyclic structure and mm -hmm. then attacking the aldol. Right. Or the, like, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but, yeah. I just thought it would prefer the outer because um, even though it's not like a big bulky base, it's still like, like the. See, the H that we're taking it from, the, the carbon is more substituted. Right, so steric hindrance. Yeah. That's actually a good analysis. So steric hindrance is oftentimes one of the key issues. That's a good thing to have thought of. That's perfectly reasonable. It turns out that in this case, there's another issue that outweighs that. But it's good to have thought about the steric hindrance issue here 
It turns out what's more important is, remember that generally speaking, it's not that easy to take protons from carbons. Carbons don't like having negative charges, but this is exceptional. What is it that stabilizes the negative charge on this carbon? Yeah, there's another resonance form where the negative charge could be on this oxygen, say. In fact, I think you might have actually drawn that resonance form. We've talked about how you can draw either of those resonance forms here, although I prefer this one. So there's another resonance form where the negative charge could be on this oxygen. However, there's something, uh, and that's the reason why alpha carbons can, are acidic. But there's something that makes this alpha carbon more acidic than a normal alpha carbon. What is it that makes this particular alpha carbon even more acidic than a normal alpha carbon? And again, we want to use resonance to explain that. Oh, it has either side to give it resonance to right. there's two oxygens. That's right, that's right. We were already talking about last time how the theme for this whole semester is looking for resonance structures uh, and looking for more than one resonance structure. This alpha carbon has another resonance structure where the negative charge can be on this oxygen and a third resonance structure where the negative charge could be on this oxygen. So it's an especially easy to deprotonate alpha carbon. But if you think about it, if you deprotonated this carbon, there would only be one other resonance structure. It could only put the negative charge over here. It's too far away from this carbonyl on the left-hand side to put its negative charge there. You can confirm that if you draw that out. So if we deprotonate this alpha carbon, this terminal alpha carbon, there's only um, the one extra resonance structure, but here's there the two extra resonance structures. And again, this is the exact type of explanation you might need to use on the exam as well, using resonance to explain why things prefer one mode rather than another mode. However, if there was another carbon in between there, yeah. would it prefer the terminal? If there was another carbon in between there, then we couldn't get these two different resonance structures. That's right. And then I don't really know which one would be preferred. Maybe steric hindrance would then be the most important issue. I doubt you would be expected to predict that. No, You'd probably get a mix. It, it's like more, it's a five-membered ring. So be able to like... Right. Well, ultimately, we're actually not expecting this to attack itself. We're expecting yeah, it to attack right. here, so we're not really, we're not really, uh, we're not really going to get a ring either way. This isn't really a matter of getting a ring. But isn't it if it's there, it's going to attack itself first and then go attack this? Uh, let's see. I don't think so. So what, what you're thinking about is... A situation like this. Now, in this case, if we formed a ring, it would be a one, two, one, two, three membered ring, which would not be all that favorable to form. No, put in a four. One, two, two, three. One, two, three, four. Where's the fourth atom? One, Five. two, three. Remember that it would attack that carbonyl carbon. It's not going to attack the alpha carbon. Yeah, the enol, like the. Um, Alpha carbon will attack the carbon you want. So if that happened, we would get this. I wasn't making that the enol. Oh. I was making like the terminal. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. My mistake. I was confused. So you were thinking that we could deprotonate uh, over here. OK, maybe that's reasonable. Then you're right. One, two, three, four. So that wouldn't, be, uh, that wouldn't be too unreasonable. That would give us a fairly stable ring. So I, th I think that's one of the things that would happen there. You'd probably get a whole mix of products there. So um, I, I don't think you would see a question or they would ask you to draw multiple different types of products. But yeah, in this case, maybe it would be reasonable to deprotonate here. Um, well, let's see. So if you're able to form more than one enolate, which one do you usually form? Uh, it's true, I guess, that you usually do form the less substituted enolate. So, um, uh, so in this case, I guess uh, maybe this would be the preferred one to deprotonate. So that, that was a good point there. So it is true that if you have more than one alpha carbon to deprotonate, in many cases you would um, prefer to take uh, to deprotonate the less substituted. Not only for steric hindrance, but notice this has three hydrogens and this only has two. So just statistically, it's more likely that this would lose a hydrogen than this one because there's only, there's three of them to lose here and only two here. So there are some situations where you would prefer to form the less substituted enolate. That's a good point. There are situations where you would prefer to form uh, the less substituted enolate. Although, uh, so like it also somewhat depends on the base. I don't know if that would happen with uh, a rel uh, not oh, with yeah. a base like this. So uh, I guess we can get more into that. So those can get a little complicated. If we see questions like that in the uh, midterm, we'll get into more details. I don't know how much detail your instructor is getting into here. The one thing that you are likely to see, though, is one th these are called 1,3 dicarbonyls. 
because there's like a 1-3 relationship between the two carbonyls, and you're almost sure to be testing the idea that the alpha carbon between the two carbonyls is especially acidic. The alpha carbon between the carbonyls is especially acidic. That uh, does come up all the time. Okay, so we decided we were going to deprotonate here because of the two extra resonance forms. And again, we're talking about how important it is to look for all the resonance structures. What, what's the name of this type of ion here? Enol? No? Enolate. Close. Remember, enols are neutral, enolates are negative. So this would be called an enolate. And remember, the enolate could also be drawn with a resonance form where the negative charge is on an oxygen. Okay, so we've deprotonated this alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon we're focusing on, so we don't need to keep labeling these alpha carbons.